Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Now, once again, I have headed out to the local bush to see what sort of fascinating little critters I can find. First in line, one of Brisbane's most stunning centipedes, Ricida nuda. Granted, years worth of keeping a varied assortment of huge Scolopendra and Ethmostigmus species from all over the country has to an extent dampened my enthusiasm toward these smaller local centipedes. But even so, there's always a slight rush of excitement when, after flipping a rock or a log, I glimpse the telltale sky blue legs of this species flitting through the leaf litter. Ricida nuda is a small to medium sized centipede reaching lengths of a little under 10 centimetres. Although very fast and skittish, it is quite a timid, passive animal, more inclined to run than bite, and equipped with a rather weak venom. I took an envenomation from a relatively large individual of the species a couple years back. Though the pain was more than sufficient to get my attention, it was easily bearable. At its worst, it was comparable to the numb feeling one gets when they wake up after sleeping on their arm. Though far outclassed in brute strength, venom potency and overall ferocity by its larger cousins, Ricida nuda is still a fierce predator in its own right, and definitely something that many of the insects, spiders and small lizards in the area would do well to be wary of. Ricida nuda isn't exactly a rare encounter, though the opportunity to film one before it darts out of sight very seldom presents itself. But there's another centipede that's not only even more common around Brisbane, but also a little more obliging under the spotlight. Cormocephalus is perhaps the most frequently encountered genus of Scolopendrid centipede in Australia. As of 1983, Australia is home to 17 Cormocephalus species, and between them they occupy every state and territory in the country. This particular species is the centipede I most frequently find around Brisbane, and identifying it beyond genus level with any degree of confidence is proving to be rather difficult. Based off the diagnoses provided in a 1983 review of the genus, Cormocephalus brachycerus and Cormocephalus montethi initially seem to be the most likely candidates, based off the coloration and short antennae. However, a closer look at the antennae seems to show that the first seven or eight antennomeres, the individual segments that make up each antenna, are glabrous, or in simpler terms, smooth, which is more in line with Cormocephalus aurantiaipes, a highly variable species that is perhaps the most widespread member of its genus in Australia. In Cormocephalus brachycerus and Cormocephalus montethi, the number of glabrous antenomeres is 4 to 5 and 6 respectively. Cormocephalus is a mildly venomous, relatively docile centipede and significantly less flighty and skittish than Ricida nuda, at least based on my experience. While I would have to be bestowed with tremendous luck to get more than a couple seconds worth of decent footage of the latter, the former tend to be a lot more cooperative, often sitting still for a few moments after being revealed. Another Cormocephalus species that can be found around Brisbane is Cormocephalus westwardi. This is a species I most often encounter in rainforest, so seeing a couple individuals in dry eucalypt forest was a little bit of a surprise, though not especially anomalous. Cormocephalus westwardi can be differentiated from the sympatric Cormocephalus based on its somewhat more slender build and its disproportionately large, thick terminal legs. It appears, at least based on personal observation, that Cormocephalus westwardi from these drier habitats 
tend to exhibit less vibrant coloration than their rainforest counterparts. For comparison's sake, here is one that I found in the subtropical rainforest toward the base of Mount Mitchell in the scenic rim. But whether the apparent difference in coloration is due to environmental or genetic factors is something of which I have naught to say. Centipedes aren't the only many-legged mini-beasts that abound in the area. So too are their distant cousins, the millipedes. This is Australocrichus perditus, a moderately large and rather attractively patterned species that appears to be rather common around Brisbane. It doesn't seem to be all too fussy about habitat either, although I find plenty beneath rotting logs, a typical home site for these arthropods, it's hardly uncommon to spot them beneath the loose peeling bark of eucalypts as well. Sheltering in a similar manner to huntsmen. Like many millipedes, Australocrichus perditus appears to be rather gregarious, frequently hunkering down alongside conspecifics of varying ages. These are members of the superorder Juliformia, arguably the most familiar of the major millipede divisions, easily recognisable by virtue of their elongated cylindrical bodies. Within the Juliformia, Australocrichus perditus belongs to the order Spirobolida, characterised by the presence of a suture that runs vertically down the centre of the head, and it is a member of the family Rhinochrysidae. The Rhinochrysidae are abundant around southeast Queensland, and in the subtropical rainforests that lie around Brisbane, numerous species can be found of varying sizes and colours. Millipedes, unlike the predominantly predaceous centipedes, are detritivores. The rotting logs within which they shelter are also their principal source of food, though fruits, leaf litter and other organic matter forms part of their diet as well. Slow moving, rather conspicuous and equipped with no obvious defences aside from a reasonably tough exoskeleton, Millipedes may seem at first glance to be an easy quarry for an all manner of predators. Yet surprisingly few hunters target them, thanks to a subtle but highly effective chemical deterrent. When faced with what it perceives to be an imminent threat, it may secrete a malodorous and potentially irritating fluid from glands along the length of its body. For us humans, it generally has little effect beyond temporary discoloration if it isn't washed off promptly enough. But for a smaller assailant, such as a spider, it can be a much more formidable deterrent. And that just about wraps up this video. Truth be told, this upload wasn't one that I had planned at all. I was just absent-mindedly flipping some rocks and logs as one does, and lo and behold, I found a ton of centipedes and millipedes. Which is great because I intend on making a video comparing the two groups further down the line, and of course, it's excellent to have as much footage of both of those animals as I can. In the meantime, you can look out for a couple more future uploads. A review of Prehistoric Planet, which is taking forever to work on, and another episode of the Guide to Australian Spiders series. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this video in the comments section below. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe and don't forget to check out some of my other uploads too. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.